Okay, so let me pray before I continue. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give glory to the Almighty God, the creator of the universe. The one who created us in his image and has given us all power to live our lives. That we should also ask everything that will be given to us. When we are in need, we should knock. And when we knock, the doors will be opened. We should look and we shall find it. 
Glory to the name of our God, who called us from our sins, not because we, we were righteous, not because we have done anything, but he called us by the grace of his son, who died on the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our husbands, our wives, our children, our friends, our neighbors. Father, we continue to pray that you speak to every one of us and continue to touch them, especially those who are on their way, doing their own things. That Lord, as you call Paul, Paul on his way on Damascus, you will reach out to every family member. You will reach out to every friend. You will reach out to every neighbor. Even you will reach out to our enemies and forgive them and turn them to yourself. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord, you take our steps, you take our lips, Father, and use it to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray that Lord, you give us, everyone, a teachable spirit and give us the spirit of unity and love. To live together in Jesus name give us the strength to continue the great commission which you have assigned to us from now on throughout the year 2019 and beyond we give you glory and we thank you for the grace that you have given to us before you this morning in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ somebody say amen to the glory of God Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Patricia. God bless you. Um, so, if you can see my screen, the topic this morning, in the evening today, we're going to continue with the prophetic or prophecy analysis. We are doing prophecy analysis of 2019. And this morning, we're not going to do it. We do that in the evening. But this morning, I want to talk to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I know you, you already know what is the gospel or you have heard of what is the gospel. So, uh, on my screen, or the topic says, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? Because that is what we have all been called to do did you hear what i say what i said i said we all have been called to preach the gospel of jesus christ anything that we are doing apart from preaching the gospel of jesus is like we are doing something else so let me read the scripture from the book of First Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter number fifteen. First Corinthians, chapter number fifteen. Now, this is Paul speaking. Paul says, in verse number one of the book of First Corinthians, chapter fifteen. Let me turn my key Bible on. He says, "Moreover, brethren." I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive, and in which you stand. Now, listen to here. So, he says that, brethren, I declare, meaning in P here, I am still reminding you. So, it means we need to keep on reminding ourselves of the gospel which you receive. And let me remind you, it is the gospel of Jesus that you received. The day one from the beginning 
or it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that has been preaching to you always, always, the gospel of Jesus. It is the gospel of Jesus that set you free or that gave you freedom, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So the question is, what is the gospel? Paul says that I declare to you, I make it plain to you, the gospel. I want to explain to you the gospel which you receive. And our belief, our movement, our hope, our going and our coming in as children of God, what we speak based or stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. They stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Either than that, we cannot be called Christians. Either than that, we cannot be called Christians. So let's continue to ask the question as we continue. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? In P, Obaka said, Asempa. P, you see, Asempa. Yesu Christo, Asempa. Any day. Yesu Christo, Asempa. Any day. This is what makes the Bible completely different from any other book. The gospel makes the Bible complete different from any other book i know some people have been telling you or or making statement that the bible is just a mere book i just want to announce to you this morning the bible contains the gospel of jesus christ and as long as the bible contains the the gospel of jesus christ it is not an ordinary book. It's not a written book of any philosopher. It is the written statement of God himself. So let's go to verse number two. We're trying to find out what is the gospel. And we're using 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 down. Let's continue. Now, Paul continued to say in verse 2, by which, say by which also you are saved. Okay? It is by the gospel that you and me are saved. So, if we want to do anything in word or in deed as Christians, must base on the gospel and then 99% of our talking, of our business, of our meetings should be related to the gospel of Jesus Christ as believers because that is what saved us. We were saved by the gospel of Jesus. So everything we do should be based on the gospel of Jesus. And that's why Paul said, by which you are saved. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, so if we if you hold fast means that if we continue to preach the gospel, if we continue to believe the gospel, if we continue to make the gospel of Jesus Christ the main message that we preach, that we talk. We shall, we shall be forever free. We shall be forever free. And at the same way, we shall also free others. We shall also be able to free others. If we hold on to the, to the gospel, meaning if we continue daily talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ, there shall be peace, or there will be peace among us. Peace will be among us. Our nations will have freedom if we continue with the gospel of Jesus. So we're still finding the answers to what is the gospel of Jesus. 
The music oh sorry mama mi numu nkura mama mi numu mbacho thank you let me very good thank you very much me dumu no wa mbacho eh patricia me dumu music no so god bless you for reminding me so if we continue with the gospel i'm telling you we shall not have problem that is how i know and that is what i understand Unless you believe in vain. Unless we, you see, if we have believed in vain of the gospel, that is where we start doing all kinds of stuff. That is where we fight amongst us. That is where we see fake prophecies. Fake prophecies. If we believe in vain of the gospel, we make mockery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then we begin to fight ourselves. Then we begin to divide ourselves. Then we see prophets coming out to fake messages. They abandon the true gospel and then they begin to preach different messages like unnecessary prophecies that does not lead anybody to heaven. It is the gospel that lead mankind to heaven it is the gospel of jesus christ that brings eternal life to every human being and it is the gospel that we need to be preaching every day we need to be talking about every moment it is the gospel that need to be the main message of every preacher of every evangelist of every pastor, of every teacher, of every apostle. It is the gospel that must be the main message in our songs that we sing as church, as Christians. It is the gospel that must lead us in every sphere, sphere of life. It is the gospel that must lead us in every sphere of life. The gospel is supreme hallelujah so let me continue from verse number three so we must not take the gospel for granted we must not joke with the gospel we must not replace the gospel with any other message we must continue to preach and teach the gospel to the whole world in our churches with our discussions with our friends verse number three as we continue to find out what is the gospel now verse number three first corinthians chapter 15 he says for i deliver to you first of all that which i also receive so this is the interpretation and the meaning of the gospel in verse number three that paul is about to de deliver in his message here for i deliver to you of all that which i also received that christ died for our sins so the gospel of jesus christ on the calvary cross means christ jesus died for our sins isn't isn't it a good news for somebody for a righteous person to die for a sinner that is what is called the gospel that christ jesus died for sinners jesus christ died for armed robbers jesus christ died to save prosti prostitutes jesus christ died to save us from the original sin of Adam. Through Adam, all men have sinned. According to the book of Romans. Mama Lucy, check your form. Mama Lucy, check your form. Let me show You see, according to the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 3, and then chapter 6 and Isaiah chapter 53 and then in the book of Genesis chapter 3 
it give us a picture of the sins of mankind and the sins because of our, because of our sins we are all helpless and we need a savior who will come and connect us to the almighty god that in the beginning from the book of genesis man was separated from him because of sin because of disobedience we needed such a savior who will come and reconnect us to god almighty hallelujah in the beginning god created man in his image and god wanted man to live forever and ever to live eternally that was the purpose the ultimate purpose of god to, to create man to live forever so god put a test before man he want to know if man will continue to obey him or would disobey him so he intentionally he knew what he was doing not that god didn't know what he was doing but he still wanted to see what man will do so he put in two trees and one is called the tree of good the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you understand the the the, the tree of the knowledge of evil and of good which means the moment you eat of that tree you're going to have knowledge of what is good and what is evil the reason why god put that tree there is because evil has already been in existence evil has already been there and evil was created by satan not god evil was created according to the book of uh, isaiah chapter 14 and then and then we also go to the book of uh, Ezekiel will tell us of the beginning when satan plan evil in his heart against god that is where evil started so before god created man evil has been around evil has been around according to the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 1 you want me to read that before we come back to continue what we are saying Let, let's see let's see genesis chapter 1 verse 1 okay so when we read just which is just a reference i'm not teaching on that so i'm just making a quick reference on that in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse number 1 it says that in the beginning god created heaven and earth so in the original dateless, dateless past, listen, he said in the original dateless past, which nobody knows how and when it started, which nobody know when was that beginning. The only one that knows that beginning is the almighty God. And he said in the beginning, he created heaven and earth, period. And that was perfect. There was nothing added in verse 1. When God created, there was no sin. There was no nothing like sin. Everything was perfect when God created heaven and earth. Do you get that statement from the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1? That in the beginning, God created heaven and earth, which means there was nothing wrong with the creation. But now, let's read verse number two. When we read verse number two, it says that the earth was without form. And that is the next level you need to understand that the earth that God created perfect, now it was without form. 
did you think or do you think that God created heaven and earth without form? No. He didn't create it without form. He created heaven and earth. Perfect. But something happened that turned the world system into formless or void or turn it into darkness. Something turned the world system that God created into darkness. Into darkness. And then he says that was the face of the deep. Okay, darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God created heaven and earth. So how come at this time we are hearing the spirit of God hovering on the face of the waters? So now there is no land. There is no earth. It is now water on earth above. What make it happen like that? And that is why I'm telling you it was because of sin. God decided to destroy that world he created with water. So he covered the whole world with water. Now, who were living in that world at that time? When we go to the book of Jeremiah, the prophet gave us an idea of what happened. And the book of Isaiah chapter 14 also gave us an idea of what happened. I think uh, Jeremiah and Isaiah chapter 14, they have a very good information for us. But uh, because I said I'm not talking on that subject, I'm not going to deviate. I'm just making reference to you and show you how the world system turned out and and because of that god decided to send in a savior after he created or recreated the world again so if you read the book of genesis then you can see that and god said let there be light and there was light Everything was there before, so it was a recreation. Recreation. The only thing that God created new is human being. Read it well. The only thing that God created new is human being. Created in his own image. Because first he created angels to rule the world, to rule the, to rule the earth. And they disappointed God. So the world was being ruled by Satan, which, who was called Lucifer in those days before. So it was Lucifer and his angels who ruled this world before. The world that was covered with water. Before it was not water. Lucifer, Satan, or Lucifer, and his subordinates were living and ruled. He was like the leader and occasionally he will be going to heaven to give reports to God. He has the access of going from earth to heaven to give a report. Until one day he decided that no, I will not let God alone be the, the, the supreme, the almighty, the all in all. After all, I also have people after me. When I'm coming, I don't come alone. So why don't, why he must not go down and I come up? So he started planning all these evil things in his heart. That is not God. So evil nowhere was created by God. Satan's idea is evil. Satan's idea, Lucifer's idea is evil. And that is why he was thrown out from heaven. So when you read the book of Revelation chapter 12, it will tell you how Satan started his 
evil deeds in heaven and the angels of God, the angels that were, were with God, fought against Lucifer and his angels and they were not able to uh, 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 prevail. They were not able to prevail the world and they were thrown out of heaven to this earth. So uh, the prophet says, so woe unto men that live on earth at this time. Because before God created man, sin has been around. And that is the more reason he put two trees, called one of them the tree of the knowledge of evil and the knowledge of good because god knew evil has been around long time okay and then one of the tree he named it the tree of life the tree of life so god gave option to man that the day you eat of this tree that is called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you will die Meaning, you will be cut off from men. You will be separated from men. So, it could have been better for man to eat of the tree of life and live forever. If he had eaten the tree of life, man would live forever and never die. So, after the eat of the tree of the knowledge of evil and the knowledge of good, God said, no. Now that you have eaten this tree and you know what is evil and you know what is good, I will not sit down or allow you to go and also eat of the tree of life and live forever in sin. Live forever in sin. It, it, it will not happen. So God cut man or removed man from his presence and put him to a place or an uncultivated place area of the land where man was living before it was a very nice decorated field god has already prepared it for man to live there happily in peacefully but because of the disobedience and sin he was removed from that place and immediately that man was removed from that place god made provision for him Provision that will bring him back to the throne of grace, to the original abode. God made provision for man. And what that provision was in the book of Genesis chapter number 3, verse 15. And it was a prophecy concerning the son Jesus Christ who will come one day and destroy the agenda of death and destroy anything that separated man from God. So, it happened one day that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believed on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the purpose of sending Jesus Christ was to die a sinner's death, was to give him, himself or his life as a, as a sacrificial death or as a sacrifice, as an atonement for sinners. So Jesus exchanged his righteous life for our sins. That is exactly what is called the gospel and which Paul is teaching or talking about in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. So we're going back to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 to continue to read. 1 Corinthians, we continue to read chapter number 15. we on verse number 3 now. Verse number three now. So, verse number three, I will start right there again. It says, For I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, that Christ died 
for our sins according to the scriptures. So Christ's death for sinners is what it means, the good news. Let's continue. There are more to Christ's death or how Christ died for sinners. Then verse number four says, and that he was buried, Christ died. So the gospel includes the death of Jesus Christ, his barrier, and then what else? So he was buried and that rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. So you see, these three things, these three things, or one of them, which I will add the same, make or put together the meaning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number one, say Christ died. Okay, let's, let's make it three. He died. So he died for our sin is one. Listen. The gospel means, number one, Jesus Christ died for our sins. Number two, the gospel means Jesus Christ was buried in our sins. Number three, what it means by the gospel is that Jesus Christ raised in victory for our sins. He raised in victory. In victory over sins. Listen. Jesus was raised in victory over our sins. Hallelujah. Do you understand that? Bishop Nana, God bless you. Jesus Christ was raised in victory over our sins, meaning our sins were no longer hold or held against us. After the death of Jesus, sins were not held against anybody who believe on the name of Jesus Christ. And that is the gospel. That is good news. So no matter who you are and where the geographical location of you, the moment you confess Jesus Christ, he receives you and he forgives you. He doesn't count your sins against you anymore. So, scriptures like the book of Romans, let's go to the book of Romans chapter 5. It's, it's one of the interesting and powerful scriptures. So, let's read from verse number 1. It's very interesting. And maybe I will jump it to verse number 8. So, when we read Romans chapter 1, it says, Therefore, having been justified, by faith you see so when you talk about the gospel of jesus christ is about justification and justification is a judicial term that word is mostly used by judges by judges to determine the fate of a criminal particularly they use that word to to determine what will be the next the next uh, 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 stance of a criminal justification and we as sinners before we were condemned to death you understand what I mean we were condemned to death or we have been condemned to death but all of a sudden Jesus Christ intervened. When we say somebody, when we say he intervened, it means that all of a sudden he, he just jumped in. Jesus just jumped in. Which actually had already been planned by God before the creation of this world. But at the appointed time, at the fullness of the appointed time, Jesus jumped in. In to the judgment. He jumped in the middle. He jumped into the middle of the judgment. And acquainted us. Meaning. And removed us from the docket. Uh, from from what, uh, what you call it. Where the criminals stands to make their statement. He just removed us from there. And declared us 
and declare us innocent, righteous. He completely declared us righteous, unblemished. So at that moment, right there, God was not seeing the sins of mankind anymore. Let me finish this and I will read another scripture too. Let me read this quick. He said that therefore having been justified by faith, we have been peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And then through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Hope of glory. And let me continue a little bit before I stopped. And then, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. And verse number six says, I'm reading to number eight, then I'll stop there. For when we were still without strength, look at this, is very, very important here. He says that when we were still without strength, due, uh, due time, Christ died for ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will die yet, perhaps for a good one, or for a good man sometime, Oh, a good man, a good man. Someone would even die to a uh, dare to die. But God demonstrates. Listen, this is a demonstration of the love of God. Last week we've been talking about love, love, love. And this is how God Himself demonstrated His love, according to verse number eight of the book of Romans, chapter five. But God demonstrates His love, His own love towards us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see that? So the, the meaning of the gospel is that Christ died for sinners. He died for sinners. That is good news. So let me show you again where I was talking about the acquaintance, justification. Okay? In the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Second Corinthians, let's take it from verse number 17. That will be 17 to 21 of the book of Second Corinthians chapter 5. That will be very interesting here. So here too, in verse number 17 of the book of First Corinthians, it says that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So the moment you come to Jesus, you have become a new person altogether. So you have to, you have to stop. Or the gospel help you to stop. Let me put it this way because it's not by might nor by power. So the moment you come to Jesus Christ, you confess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. The gospel of Jesus, the strength of the gospel. <laughs> Do you hear what I say? The strength of the gospel because... Uh, when we read the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 6, uh, it was given a very good, listen to that one before I continue. Sometimes, hey, this is very interesting. Uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 6 says, For when we were still without strength, look, look at that, when we were still without strength. So I'm saying here that when you confess Jesus Christ, the gospel of Jesus gives you extra strength to come out of sin or your sins. Either than that, there is no way you're going to quit what you were doing. Everybody loved what he or she is doing. If I'm cheating people and making money, that is good. I want to continue to cheat people and get money if, if nobody will catch me. You understand? If I'm sleeping with other people's wives, yeah, I want to continue to take advantage of that all the time if nobody catches me. That is what people are doing in the world. If I'm in government and I have a way of making extra money in addition to my paycheck, and then will be a big man, that is what I will continue to do. I love to do that. People love to do that, not me, <laughs> okay? 
People love to do that. Once they have the chance to do something that nobody sees, they take advantage and they keep on doing it. They keep on doing it. So it's hardly people who have been addicted to such situations will come out of it just like that. So it is only the strength, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ that enable us to come out of our sinful nature. You understand? That is why I'm reading uh, the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, uh, verse 15, 17, sorry, verse 17 down. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 down. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. So when you come to Jesus, it's, it's, the, it's the point, it's at the time for you to stop doing all that you were doing, the crook things, gossiping, things that does not add any value to your life. It doesn't add any value to your life. It doesn't add any value to our society. Anything that does not add any value to, to the family. Anything that does not add any value to the community where you live. When you come to Jesus Christ, it's time for you to stop. It's time for you to stop. Hallelujah. And if you allow yourself, the power of the gospel will continually separate you from those sins. So, in the book of Romans, before I continue uh, First Corinthians again, uh, the scripture keeps coming, so I need to make references to them to help you understand exactly what I'm talking about. So, in the book of Romans chapter 12, continue to say, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and, perf and, and, and perfect will of God. This is what and how we need to live our lives now that we have come to Jesus Christ. Now that we have come to know Jesus Christ, we must promote peace. Everything that comes out of our mouth as ministers, as children of God, must promote peace. It shouldn't generate conflict. Hallelujah. Anything that a man of God is saying must promote peace. It shouldn't be something that will create panic. It shouldn't be something that creates fear in people's heart and mind. You see, like, for instance, we started a new year. Everybody is happy that God has given us the grace to enter into a new year, into a new year, a new level of life. It's, it's, it's just a joy. It's just a joy. Even if you are sick, God has still given you. If you even die today, your death will not be dated back in 2018. You, you, your death will be dated today, 20, 2019. And that makes it or oh, that makes it good to celebrate that God has given you a new life. God has given you a new life. So if we are in a new life and we are all celebrating and somebody comes out as a prophecy or as a prophet to tell us that my daddy is going to die or I am going to die or you are going to die, that makes it an evil act. It's not something that promotes peace in the, in, the, in the heart of the people. So born again people don't do that. People that have a change of mind in Jesus Christ, people that have a change of the gospel don't preach or don't do things like that. And I don't see that anywhere in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You understand? So anybody who comes out to prophesy in the new year, that somebody is going to die to create panic and fear and to create confusion in our society, I'm telling you, that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why today I am teaching and talking to you about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't, doesn't create confusion. The gospel of Jesus Christ does not create division. The gospel of Jesus Christ does not create fear and panic. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ unites people to God. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ brings people together. The gospel of Jesus Christ even help you or make you unite with your enemies, people that are in loggerheads with you. The gospel of Jesus Christ changes you and their minds to come together. The, the gospel of Jesus Christ does not create confusion among our youth to go out to destroy things. That is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if you see and you hear any prophet today saying things that create panic and fear, that is not the gospel of Jesus. And that is not what Jesus Christ, who called us as ministers and children of God, to go out and preach. He did not call anybody to prophesy death. The church of Jesus Christ, the fivefold ministry of Jesus Christ, nowhere and never that the fivefold ministry has been called to prophesy death to people. Nowhere. And it's not from God. You understand? So let's continue to read Romans chapter, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I've done with the 17 that when you become a new creation, all things become new. When you come to Jesus, or you become a new creation and all things are new from that moment. Okay? So now, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, now I'm on by verse number 18, says that now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Jesus, listen to that word, reconciliation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, reconcile with people, reconcile with sinners, reconcile with unbelievers, reconcile with people who hate us for no reason. Physically, we are talking about physical people. Listen. When Jesus Christ gave us the, this gospel, it was not spiritual. He was talking to us in terms of physical terms. Listen to that again. How to make peace with physical human beings. So don't come and tell me I see things in the spiritual realm. Jesus Christ did not give us the gospel of spiritual realms. He told us about the principalities, the powers of darkness. And all those evil spirits in the higher places. But he told us so that we shall be aware of them and live our life here on earth circumspectively, wisely. You understand? But he told us to go and make peace with the gospel with our friends and fellow neighbors. So everything about the gospel create peace. Create peace. Christ Christianity is about the love of God and the peace that God brought to mankind here on earth. It is our duty as children of God to make peace with everybody. To make peace with everybody. So it is very, very important to avoid any statement that will create division. It's very, very important to be very careful of any statement that will create division and confusion. Hallelujah. So, if you are a man of God, if you are a prophet of God, if you are a pastor, a teacher, an apostle of God, evangelist of God, and you coming out to say something and what you are going to say, is going to create confusion. It is going to create conflict. It will bring conflict. It will bring division. Then you must know that is not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ teaches people how they should live with one another in peace and in love. The gospel of Jesus Christ Demonstrate the love of God. The gospel of Jesus. It demonstrates the love of God and reconcile. It makes a reconciliation. 
wherever there is wrong. The gospel of Jesus finds the wrongs and cancel it. He looks for the wrongs amongst us and he cancels it and removes the wrongs amongst us so that when we, we live, we live as nothing between us or nothing has happened before. Although we have, we have been fighting before, but when the, the gospel of Jesus comes, it removes the conflict between us and it unites us. Whether we all believe in Jesus or we don't believe in Jesus, it unites us with other people. Hallelujah. The gospel of Jesus unites us. And if it doesn't unite us, there is no way we will be able to go and preach to them. You understand? If you, if you are not united with someone, how can you go to him and talk to him about the gospel? So the gospel of Jesus says we must live in peace with Muslims. We must live in peace with uh, 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 religious people. We must live in peace with, uh, with uh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddhism, the people who uh, worship Buddha. We must live in peace with everybody. We must love them. Hallelujah. And the more we love them, the more we must be able to present to them the good news, the gospel, which we have been reading from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me finish verse number 19 to 21 quick. Let's see. Verse number 19 of 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 15, 19 to 21 says, <coughs> that is that God was in Christ reconciling, uh, reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation you see god has given us the word of reconciliation as pastors and believers so we are to go out there make sure we make peace make sure we say things that will change the minds of the youth in the street so if we begin to say things that will the strike the youth to create problem there is a question mark of what we see so there is a question mark of all these prophets in ghana who prophesied 2019 of different kinds there is a question mark in every one of them question mark if you can't put question mark on them then you yourself you have a problem listen if you can't put a question mark on the prophets who prophesied during the 31st December for 2019 if you are afraid and you are not bold enough to put that question mark on them you have a problem I have problem with you that you can't put a question mark on Usu Bempa and try to tolerate Owusu Bempa. If Owusu Bempa preaches the good news, do you think that the Muslims boys will go to his house and create that confusion? If he was preaching the good news, do you think that the boy, those boys will go to his house? No, they wouldn't have gone to his house to do that nonsense. They won't go there and do that. I don't support what these young men went to do there. But Osubanpa created that stupidity. He created that stupidity for the young boys to go and do what they did yesterday. Because as a prophet of God, he was supposed to come out and preach the, go the gospel of Jesus Christ. So tell me, where in the gospel of Jesus Christ that includes the prophecy of death of our leaders? Where in the gospel of Jesus Christ includes the, 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 the prophecy of, 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 of the prominent people or the death of the prominent people in our country. I am 54 years. Maybe I am I'm maybe older than Ousu Bemba. Or he may be older than me. And I have done the work of God. I have been in the house of God since I was seven years. I have traveled to live in the United States of America for 16 years. 
Other places I have not gone before, but I have read articles from different countries. And I have never heard that every year, 31st December, prophets of a particular country come out and they begin to prophesy death about people. I have never seen that, and I have never seen that in this Bible that we all read. If that is in the Bible we all read, let somebody come out and prove. If the meaning of the gospel of Jesus Christ is about prophesying death to our prominent men and and what, what do we call them? Uh, 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 these people. You see, if the gospel of Jesus Christ is meant to, to prophesy death, let somebody come out. Let Ousu Bempa and his fellow prophets come out and tell us that the meaning and, and the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to come out of uh, to come out every 31st December and make a list of prophecies of death. That is nonsense. That is nonsense. It's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's continue. So now, the, the, the work or the word of reconciliation has been given to believers to go and make peace with all human beings. So in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, says, go into all the world and preach the good news, the gospel. This is the gospel. The gospel is where we, we no matter how difficult and the situation is, we try to bring peace. But if we do something that creates confusion and division and chaos, then ask yourself, is that a gospel? Let me ask so Usu Bempa, is that a gospel? So if these guys go to your house to create chaos, then who are you blaming? I'm not saying what they did was right. They took the law into their hands to do that. And that is not right. That is, that is illegal and falsely, uh, falsely uh, uh, entry into somebody's house. Nobody should do that to anybody that somebody is in his house. And then you just go there and uh, attack him. Uh, uh, that is, we live by law in our nation. So in everything, if you don't understand, you go by the law. You don't take the law into your hands and go to Usubempa's house and and then do things that is not uh, is not in the law. Okay. As 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 people of a nation, we all one in the nation. We may disagree with our beliefs. Somebody is a Muslim. That is that person's belief. I am a Christian. That is my belief. Somebody is a Hare Krishna. Somebody is a Mormon. That is their, their beliefs. Unto God himself, through peace message, will bring everyone together. Unto that, everyone is believing what they believe. But that does not separate us as one people. That does not. The, the fact that we have different beliefs does not separate us. The different belief does not separate us as one people of a nation. We are all one people of a nation. Whether we come from North or we come from Ashanti or we come from where. Once I was born in Ghana and I'm a Ghanaian. All Ghanaians are one. We are all one. And we must work towards that oneness, unity. Okay, we must not work towards something that will bring confusion between Muslims and Christians. We must not work towards anything that will bring confusion between pastors and imams. That is what they believe and that is what they are doing. Okay, so if on the 31st of December, Getting into 2019, we have prophets of Ghana coming out. Every one of them, every one of them with a list. Every one of them with a list. What kind of God is that? That wait throughout the year, January, February, November, uh, April, May, June. Now me me do Ah, say, eh, you be seated first, Now me me do one come share 
nam de owo nkom se abere o se we be wu we be wu we be wu we be wu eh eja be sise eh eja sise da america has say fire happen everywhere in america even in america where they have a hammer who fre a yi who fre 911 who fre 911 hmm who fre 911 me be be am ye juma me ta fre 911 pa because of the nature of the job I do. I normally call 911 almost every week, once in a week. I call 911. What do I say? My friend 911, let me show you. Anytime I call 911, the longest it takes fire service and policemen to get to where I am is three minutes. Between three, one chakra, five minutes. That be who's a ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. Na fire service for car case no na aye available da 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 da. Na fe ambulance e die chire. Ambulance die chire. Oti ya se. Di enti America sanze. America kura ye very developed. Kura ano. Ah wamu wasa all this technology. Wo fry ya ape the longest one, the longest a betcha fire service car. Ana fire service ni ambulance. Either said the ambulance come first or the fire service come first. Uh, sorry, the ambulance comes first or the fire service. Yeah, come first. The longest it delays is five minutes. You understand? If you call America, if you call ambulance or nine one one, and they delay beyond ten minutes and something happen, that of uh, that uh, 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 fire service around, you know, they will be query for why they delayed. They can't delay it. They have to come. Um, more technology we create every now and then. We better say jatoha, 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 and and you will not hear any prophet in America. America, we every year. Eja is show America. California, no more. America has a, a very vast land. We more as I say, can see ah, it be a forest. I will be into a bit so America the way America tell no. We be who say if ye as she 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 follow the Musa. Every house, be every community, be is surrounded by by forest. In in Maryland where I live, in Maryland where I live, every community be is surrounded by forest or trees. And you know any time no, a just we talk forest no move be anti a just talk one na a a lady to houses nearly due to houses in america every year thousands of fire outbreak both at home and both in forest and it burns acres acres thousands of acres every year there is no prophet that comes out in america since i have been here for 18 uh, 16 years there is no prophet that comes out to prophesy say in 2019 a just share a beba they know, sir, uh, uh, as human beings, you know, human being, you, know, you can't control every human being. And as, as long as we live with technology, we can't control everything in the house. What he has here? Sometimes, you know, because of uh, pressure, when you pass on, you know, 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 you and no no, aye, and near ma, who is this? And no ye, and near ma, no matter what we do, no, is is bound to happen. And the America, they have prepared themselves for eventuality. Say whatever will happen, we have people to go and help. Say ye rub, say ye fear, any basi. America, they be an Omaya well, uh, uh, well prepared. Say the power is here, for instance, fire service. If you have a you are they are ever prepared. This is what our leaders and our nation need to do to, 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 to manage the nation in such a way that the nation will be ever prepared for anything that happens on the road. I have been on the road uh many accident I will three times and also no 
In all this, I called 911. My first accident. Let me do traffic light. Let me do traffic light. Somebody just came and hit me very hard to destroy the whole back of my car to the passenger side. It me ni subri me ma se nyami anya maduma anka car no esa masoto i. Di bare time nyami anya maduma car no ko pake here no. Car no kura odi bo me kura me uni bakro. The farm phone, nami Fred, nine one one. Pep 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 pep. Within the next five minutes, na police near drew her da 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 da. Na fire service di echire da 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 da. Na ambulance nzu di echire da 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 da. Three people, three people. Ambulance kesiya car kesiya ping pong ping pong ping pong no drew her da da da. Na am eh 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 fire service di echire police nzu 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 angkasa drew her da da da. Can you believe this? This is what the system need to put in place in Ghana. Not the prophets coming to tell us that is stupid 